you for that question and thank you for your kind words about the book. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. Um, I mean, so that's really why I included the spirit chapter. Um, I've never written about my meditation practice before. It's not, it's for me. I never thought about sharing that with anybody. But um, what I realized was that even though, like I was interviewing people and getting ta getting their advice for kind of tactics for how to manage fear and anxiety, but that for myself, the way that I've dealt with stress, most in the healthiest ways, right? So not like alcohol or weed, but like when I actually grew up and started being like, I have to find sustainable ways to be, help to be healthy and to not be consumed by anxiety was meditation and Buddhist practice. And so, um, so that's kind of like my self-care chapter. I'm trying to talk about really the politics of self-care. Like, this isn't frivolous. We have to, um, we have to know how to cultivate equanimity, not certainly for ourselves, but when we're responsible for dealing with a young person. And like, I'm so interested to read your book because you talk, it sounds like you write really honestly about the challenges of being with a young person all day. If you're at wit's end, I'm so thankful for the resources in my life. I see how terrible things happen to kids. You know, for, for people that are stretched in, for people that don't have help, for people that are struggling with mental health crises or addiction, it's so easy to see how you quickly cross that line with a screaming child all day or, you know. Um, so that's one aspect is kind of um, finding a kind of spiritual practice or something that can bring you ease so that you have the capacity to deal with the family. I think that that's really important. But then I also write a lot in the book about the importance of building community and like having help, like having people with whom you share values, with, who, with whom you can do something like create a childcare co-op or um, create the kind of institutions that we don't already see existing in the world, like schools, you know, African-centered schools. There's a whole conversation in the book about how some families are really affirmed by being able to put their children in schools with black teachers and administrators. Um, so there's, so the, those would be a few, a few things that I would say. And thank you for your point about like the fear that young black women are having increasingly around bringing kids into this world. I didn't know, but I'm learning actually on this tour where I have young black women telling me, um, that actually the more publicity that's being given to the black maternal health crisis is scaring them away from wanting to have kids. Because we're talking and writing and reporting on it more, and people are saying like, I'm afraid I'm gonna die in childbirth, I'm not sure I'm gonna do this. So thank you for giving voice to that because I'm not sure that many of us are aware of kind of the full range of impact that this new coverage is having.